Hola, ¿cómo estás? Yo soy Mr. Siegel. Y yo quiero hablar con mis... Um, yeah, okay, I don't know Spanish. Anyway, today we're going to be learning our fourth lesson in geometry. It's called Measuring Angles. And our objective is for all the students to be able to measure angles and name them. All right? So what is an angle anyway? An angle is when you have two rays that share a common endpoint. Okay? When they have a common endpoint. So let's take a look at this picture over here. Okay? This is angle ABC. All right? It's formed of two sides in a vertex. The sides are ray BA, okay? That's one side, and ray BC, all right? That's the other ray. And these are called the sides of the angle, all right? The common endpoint, which is right here, this is their common endpoint, is called the vertex. So point B would be called the vertex. Now, I saw that a lot of you said you, you love pizza. Yes, I read your, those questionnaires. So just think of it like a pizza. The point of the pizza would be the vertex, and these rays would be the sides of the pizza. And no, you can't eat an angle. I've tried, and it hurts. Name angles. Now you can name an angle in four different ways, okay? In a bunch of different ways. One, you can name it just by its vertex, okay? Now, if you look, where's the vertex? That's the common endpoint. The vertex is right here. So we could just call this angle S, all right? That's one way to name this angle. Another way that we could name this angle is by a point on each ray and the vertex. And let me be very specific about how to say this. You can name it by using all of these three points. So a point on the rays and the vertex. Now, a vertex always goes in the middle. So we would call this angle either angle, hold on, angle R, S, T, right? Because you start from here, R, S, T. The vertex is always in the middle. Or angle T, S, R, T, S, R, okay? And once again, the vertex is always in the middle, okay? In the middle. Nothing grinds my gears more when I'm like, hey, what angle is this? And people are like, uh, is it RTS? No, it is. The vertex has to be in the middle. You could also name it by its number, okay? Now, if you notice inside, there's a number right there, so we could call this angle number one. So that's another way to name it, angle one. So you have all these different ways to name your angle. Now, let's do a little practice, okay? Name the following angle in four ways. Well, let's start with the easy ones. We can name it by its vertex, which is angle J. We could name it by its number, so that would be angle 3. We could also name it by its sides in the vertex, so this would be angle K, J, H. And we could also name it going the other direction, so H, J, K. Now, the second one gets a little more crazy, right? We want to do the same thing, but for this one, we have different questions. So, we want to name both sides of angle 2. Now, angle 2 is right here, okay? It's just this part right here. Now, the sides of this angle can be found here. This is a side of the angle, and this is a side of the angle. So, the two sides of it would be this. Ray BC. That's one side. And the other side would be ray BD. All right. Name the vertex. Well, the vertex of this, the endpoint that these two rays share in common, is B. And another angle name for angle 2, we could say would be angle C, B, D. C, B, D. We could also call it. DBC, but I just chose to use that one. All right, so we know how to name our angles now. Now, there's some ways to classify them, all right? The measure an angle is usually given in degrees, okay? This year, we're going to be using degrees. There's other ways to, to measure an angle, but we're using degrees. Based on the amount of degrees on an angle, we can classify them. Now, a right angle, you might remember this, has a measure of 90 degrees, all right? And whenever we have a right angle, we draw this little square in it. 
and it looks like this L. And we put the square, and that means 90 degrees. A non-example, well, how about this? Nah, I don't like what I just drew there. That doesn't look pretty at all. Whoop, out. Okay. Well, what about this angle? That is not 90 degrees. That is less than 90 degrees. An acute angle is greater than 0 degrees, but it's also less than 90 degrees. And the way I think of acute angle is that it's so small and cute. Look at this cute little angle. It's so small. So this would be an acute angle. This is less than 90, right? It's less than this one, but greater than 0. Now, a not acute angle would be something like this, which seems to be bigger than 90. Obtuse, it must be greater than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees, like this guy, right? 180 is actually a straight line, which you're about to learn, but it has to be greater than 90, which this is definitely is. Something that wouldn't look like, maybe like this guy, which is an acute angle. And a straight line always has a measure of 180 degrees. Don't ever forget that. A straight line is 180 degrees, always, forever, on and on. So something that isn't straight, right? But how many degrees are in this straight line right here? 180 degrees. Okay, so let's classify these angles. Whoops. This first one over here, this one looks greater than 90, right? So since it's greater than 90, we're going to say that this is obtuse. This guy, well, it doesn't have the square there, but it should because this is definitely a right angle, okay? It has that L shape. This one, look, it's so cute. It's such a cute little angle. It's a cute. And this one, clearly straight. All right, so now you know how to name your angles. For the final part of this lesson, we're going to learn how to use a protractor, okay? To find the measure of an angle using a protractor, we take the greater measure, okay, the larger measure that's on the protractor, and subtract the smaller measure. Now, let's look at this angle right here. We have FOH, right? Measure of, we want to find the measure of FOH. We use our protractor, which I'll show you how to use in a second, and we find that one line passes through 125 degrees. Now that's the greater one, okay? The other line passes through 70. To find out how much this angle is, the measure of this angle, that would be how many degrees? Oh, let's do it in my head. That would be 55 degrees, all right? Now remember, when we're measuring angles, we use degrees. That's what we use. We don't use inches, we don't use feet, we use degrees to measure angles. Now how are we going to measure this? Let me show you how. I'm going to grab out my trusty protractor. All right. All right, that's my protractor. Now you take it out of your little supply box, and I want you to do the same thing. Now what you're going to do is there should be a little point right here, okay, like a little hole. And I want you to line up the vertex with that hole. So right there, we lined it right up, okay? When you line it up, right there, perfect, perfect, right there, all right? After you do that, what you do is look at the two angles, okay? So we have this angle right here, and we want to find it. Sorry, we look at the two measures. So the first measure over here is 50, right? It passes through the top one. We always use the top one. So 50. So 50 degrees. And this one passes through about 120. Okay, we'll use 120 for ease sake. To find the measure of this angle, remember, we subtract the greater angle from the smaller angle. So let's try that. So to find the measure of GEF, I would do 120 degrees minus 50 degrees. All right, that will give me the measure of angle G E F. By the way, this M right there means measure. Don't forget that. So the measure of angle G E F is equal to 120 minus 50, 70 degrees. And that's our measure using a protractor. Just got to line it up, write your two angles, and subtract. Now, 
the bonus question here is we got to name this in four different ways. We got this. We got, let's say, okay, let's start with the easy ones. This could be called angle E, right? Because that's our vertex. This could be angle 1 because we have the number 1 right here. This could be angle G, E, F, right? Start here, G, E, F, or angle going the other way, F, E, G. And that is how it's done. Boom. All right, guys, that's it for this lesson. Oh, what? There's more? We have to classify it? Not going to leave you hanging. Well, since we know that it's 70 degrees, this would be considered less than 90. So this is an acute angle. All right, now we're really done. All right, guys. Remember, have a good heart. Have confidence in yourself, but not too much confidence. Be humble and eat a lot of vegetables and don't watch TV. Really, don't go really close to the television when you're watching it. It hurts your eyes. All right. Have a great day, guys.